Hello YouTube, this is Goddard Radio Mosca here again with another beer review for you today. Now for this one I'm going to revisit one of the Scottish craft breweries that I reviewed a couple of videos back for you. And this was one that I was really really impressed with when I tried the last beer, so I'm quite interested to do this one today. And this one came highly recommended from my local Oddbin store in Aberdeen, so thank you to them for recommending this beer to me. But today I have for you the Cromarty Brewing Company's Rogue Wave Extra Pale Ale. Now the other beer I did from this brewery was the Happy Chappy Pale, and as I say I was really highly impressed with that one and you'll find the link to my video review of that beer in the pro in the, the video description there so check that out if you're interested and that link also works in such a way that when I add other reviews from this brewery that they'll also appear in that link as well but as is usual with my beer reviews I'll just take you through a little bit of a history of the brewery and tell you a little bit about the local area as I like to do with the Scottish ones just for the benefit of those of you watching outside of the country but as I always say if you are simply just interested in the tasting of this beer then feel free to fast forward towards the last few minutes of the video and you will catch that particular segment. But anyway, for the benefit of those of you watching outside of Scotland, just so you know exactly where we're talking about here, this brewery is from the Black Isle, which is just to the north of Inverness. So I always describe the country as looking a bit like a monster's head. So if you look at the northern coast of the country, the monster starts to get a bit of a mohawk thing going on here, and you have a corner in the coastline that is kind of like this. And right in the corner there, you have the city of Inverness, the highland capital. And then just to the north of this, if you go over the Keswick Bridge, you'll come to a little peninsula called the Black Isle, which just sticks out a little bit. A very, very good region for whiskey, but it's home to two Scottish craft breweries. This one, the Cromarty Brewery, which is from the northern part of the peninsula, and the Black Isle Brewery, which is from the southern part of the peninsula. This was another very, very good brewery, and my parents bought me a creative beer from this uh, brewery, so I'll review that for you once I go back home for Christmas. But this is a, both, both the breweries from this region are very, very good. But apparently in this region, the small-scale home brewing was very popular in Cromarty during the 17th century, and in this period, a lot of grain was grown on local farms and this would be malted for use in ales and the introduction of the London porters actually led to large amounts of this uh, malt being the local grain being exported to London for use in these and this actually put a bit of a strain on the local landowners who were being encouraged to form their own breweries at the time. Now the original Cromarty brewery was established by George and Alexander Ross back in 1790 and it's located next to a burn on the eastern extremity of the Cromarty village at the corner of Miller Road and Burnside Place and apparently it was quite a large brewery considering the times and it's thought that the port of Cromarty was actually used to export beer in addition to the cereals that the Black Isle was really well renowned for. But this brewery that I mentioned here formed by the Ross brothers, it hit financial difficulties in the 1820s. Apparently there's uh, there's le records of people stealing the lead pipes and things like that from this one but there was, it, went, it got into financial trouble in the 1820s when there were several whiskey distilleries opening up on the Black Isle and the brewery went on to cease operations in 1850. But moving on to this new, the new model brewery today. This is a family run business that consists of Craig, Chap and Jenny Middleton. Craig is a graduate of the famous brewing program at Heriot Watt University and this has produced a number of quite well known breweries. The one that sticks in my mind from one of my favourite breweries is Balder Carrison from the Einstuk Brewery in Arcarary in Iceland. But while studying at Heriot Watt, Craig was well known to produce beer in his student halls and flat basements and after he completed his degree he went, he went to work for periods at Odell's Brewery in Colorado, a really really nice little craft brewery out there and he also worked for the Cairn Gorm Brewery down in Avi Moor. But while working at these breweries, Craig decided that he wanted to put his own beer on the market and he applied for various grants and bank loans to actually finance his brewery and get it off the ground. But Craig's dad, Chap, is the brewery engineer and he's actually quite involved in the day-to-day -day maintenance and day-to-day -day running of the brewery equipment, while his mum, Jenny, is largely uh, involved in the admin side of the brewery. It's quite cool, actually. This is a completely family-run brewery and the, the whole family have basically bought into Craig's vision of producing this beer. And I have to say, the beer really doesn't disappoint from my experience so far. But work on the brewery building actually commenced in spring 2011 and this hectic year culminated with the production of the first casks of beer on the 19th of December 2011 just in time for Christmas and there's a blog on the brewery website there where you can keep up to date with the local with the uh, the recent goings on at the brewery so I'll put the video the link to that in the video description for you as well so check that out if you're interested but to tell you a little bit about their other beers as I say this is an interesting brewery because they're another really really new one but their other beers include the Brewed Awakening and each of these different ones actually have different coloured labels on them so the Brewed Awakening is the purple labelled one it's a coffee infused stout they have the Red Rocker which is also apparently a very very good beer this is the red label one. It's a red dry hoppy extravaganza beer as they describe it. There's Hit the Lip which is the green labelled one. This is described as fruity hoppy heaven. 
You have Happy Chappy, which is named after Craig's dad because apparently he's just he's one of the happiest guys in the world. Apparently, and this is a nice paleo, really really good beer. As I say, I reviewed this for you uh, a few weeks ago now. But there's also been a few others actually that have only been produced for tap, as far as I can tell, and that includes Island Shuffle and Atlantic Drift. And there's also been collaborations with I think it was the Tempest Brewery and the Brew Dog Brewery from Aberdeen as well. So really really it's a really really sort of up and coming brewery. And as I say, this one is very very well regarded in Scottish craft beer circles. And as I mentioned, this one, actually the Brewdog one is called Black Rocker here and it's brewed by Sarah from the Brewdog Bar in Aberdeen but it's supposed to be a dark version of the Red Rocker beer and there have been a few other ones as well as I say with the Tempest Brewery. But let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself. As I say, I'm really interested to try this one having on the basis of the other one being really good but I'll just let you have a little look at the bottle uh, artwork and things like that on this one as I usually do. I'll bring the camera up there. So as you can see it's a similar design to the other one. As I said it's just a different colour and things but it says it's Rogue Wave explicitly hopped extra paleo. This is a 5.7% American paleo and you can see the Cromarty brewing symbol up there on the top label there. And here's the bottle cap for those of you that are interested. It has a little bit of a product description on the back. And their marketing slogan is actually beer that you can believe in, but it says, Congratulations, by picking me up, you're already on your way to being a true craft beer believer. I contain absolutely no chemicals, preservative, or cheap, nasty ingredients. Instead, I am jam-packed full of quality malts, international hops, Scottish water, and fermented with our own house yeast strain. I'm a smooth, dangerously drinkable extra paleo. I am Rogue Wave. So it's really, really nice, actually. Really, really cool. And as you can see, this one has an expiry date on the back there, which is the 28th of August, 24. 14. So I'm well in, I'm well uh, prepared for this one, I have to say. But this one, apparently, it is malted using Maris Otter and Munich malts along with some wheat. And the hops used in this one are the Cascade, Calypso, Kohatu and Motuka, or Motika. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one, but that's the hops that are used in this one for you. And as I say, it's a 5.7% American Paleo. So let's get this guy out and get on with the tasting of this one. Really interested to try this, as I say. Here we are. A little bit of a smoky opening on this one, but let's get it out into the glass and get it poured. Really interested to try this one for you. Not getting much of a smell off this one so far as I've poured it actually. Maybe my nostrils are a little bit blocked. I'll just shugle up the last little bit, try and get a bit of head on this one, see how it behaves. There's just a little bit left there, but I'll leave it at that and pour out the rest in just a second. So as you can see, a really, really nice sort of goldeny amber colour there, actually. It's a really attractive looking beer, and as you can see, I've managed to get just about two fingers of head on that one there. It's a nice frothy head as well. Some, just not even that many bigger bubbles there. This beer's poured really, really well. I can see some big carbonation bubbles in there, but I can actually, if I move a little bit further back, I can see a lot of little bubbles coming up from the bottom there. So I think this one will probably be quite a well carbonated and crisp beer. As you can see, a really attractive looking beer. I'll just take the look, the last little bit of this out just now. There we are. I think that's it all poured. As I say, really, really nice, attractive looking beer. In terms of the aroma on this one, a lot of fruity aromas there, but there's a nice sort of gardeny element to it as well. You're getting a nice sort of floral and grassy element to it. But it's a very, very hoppy beer. Some nice grapefruit aromas there. The citrus is very subdued. More the grapefruit that's coming out on this one, as I think you would expect with the Cascade hops there. The other two hops I'm not too sure about with this one, but the Cascade is giving you the sort of nice grapefruity aromas there. But a lot of citrus. There's a bit of pine resin in there, and I can smell a good bit of caramel too. But I think there's a bit of gardeny and floral, like sort of florally herbal sort of elements to this one. It's a really nice smelling beer, actually. A lot of nice aromas coming off this one, but let's give it a try and see what it's like. As I say, I've heard very, very good things about this particular beer, recommended to me by Oddbins in Aberdeen. Hoppy blast right away, as you would expect from the American Paleo. Yeah, the grapefruit flavours are coming out. This is a really nice beer. The folk at Oddbins weren't wrong with this one. But yeah, you're getting the hoppy blast right at the start. Some nice grapefruit flavours coming out there. The pine resin is just mixed into it. I'm not actually picking up so much in the way of citrus as as you tend to expect. There's usually a nice blend in there between the citrus and the grapefruit. There maybe is just a little bit in the background, but it's mainly the grapefruit and the pine resin that's coming out in the opening there. But yeah, this is a really, really nice one. Again, as I say, very impressed with this beer as well. 
But yeah, a lot of grapefruit flavours kind of coming out at the start with that bit of pine raisin. This has got a little bit of sort of floral and uh, grassy, maybe a bit of herbal character to it actually on the opening with these nice fruit and piney raisin tastes there. But yeah, this has given way to a sort of nice caramel bready malt background and they're really really nice as I say very impressed with this beer as well even though I've only taken a few gulps of it but really impressed with this one as well probably even a bit more so than the Happy Chappy Pale Ale and that was a really beautiful beer as well but this one is a really really nice beer but yeah on the finish you're getting the sort of fruity hops coming back again just with a little bit of bitterness it sort of the flavour comes in quite sharp you're getting that nice breadiness in the middle and then you're just building just a little hint of bitterness on the finish there. So a really, really well balanced beer in terms of the flavour actually. I really like the sort of feel to this one. Comes in quite sharp, smooths out, you get the nice bready caramel malts and then you just get a little hint of bitterness with a wee hint of dryness actually on the finish there. So a really, really nice well balanced beer and the flavour profile if you like is really good on it as well really really good brewery as I say I can see why this is so well regarded in Scottish craft beer circles really really good beer yeah really really nice beer I have to say in terms of the mouthfeel on this one I'd say this is sort of mid bodied it's got a nice bit of soft carbonation there I thought this would be a bit more it would have be a bit more sort of a zippy than it is but the carbonation level on it is just right for the flavours in it a really really well done beer The carbonation as is actually really quite smooth. It doesn't have so much of an attack to it as you take it in, but it really smooths out the beer nicely. And this beer actually has quite a wet mouthfeel to it, just a little tad oily. But I really like that with the sort of uh, with the American pale ale style. It just gives it that really nice thing, and it makes it sort of feel a bit more like sort of fruity, juicy. It's really, really nicely. And as I say, I think this beer is really, really well done. There's a little hint of creaminess as well to the flavour I would say, but that's maybe just the sort of oily character coming out to it, but it's a really, really nice, it's got a really nice feel to it, and it's a really, really well uh, balanced beer in terms of the flavour, and I really like the sort of fla flavour profile on this, coming in a bit sharp, going down to the bready malts, then just rebuilding just that little bit, but not quite all the way, really, really well done this beer. But yeah, overall... I would describe it as clean and crisp and I highly recommend that you give this brewery a try and this particular beer I've particularly enjoyed. You know I thought the Happy Chappy Pale Ale, that is a really really nice beer as well but this one has actually topped that I think but they're both really really good beers. I highly recommend that you try either of these beers if you if you get the chance. I'm not quite sure how widely available they are at the moment. As I say this is brewery is only from 2011 so it's only it, their first beers were in, in time for Christmas in 2011 so they've only really had their beers available commercially for about two years now but as I say really really well done beers highly regarded in Scottish craft beer circles so I really recommend if you get the chance to try these don't pass it up even on I've heard the good things about these on cask as well I've not actually tried any of their beers on tap so hopefully I can find them sometime and maybe in my, some of my later reviews I can give you an opinion of the cask beers as well and how they differ from the bottled conditions. But as I say, please uh, go out and try this brewery if you get the chance. It's a really, really nice brewery and it's always good as well to support your local craft brewery. So give these guys a chance and try some of their beer. Really, really well done as I say. But I hope this beer review has been informative for you today. I've really enjoyed this one from the Cromartie Brewing Company. I look forward to getting more of their beers based on the two I've had so far and reviewing those for you. I've heard the, ro the, uh, the red one is really nice as well so I'll probably get that one in the and that will probably be my next Cromarty beer review for you at some stage but thanks again for watching my beer reviews if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the channel I hope you've enjoyed it and found it informative please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff you've been watching God of Radio Moscow and I'll be back tomorrow with another beer review thanks for your support again and I'll catch you tomorrow cheers